Top of the morning to you. Mmm. Hey, what's up, guys? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and welcome to the new and improved Nerd Cave. Don't worry, I will be doing a room tour here over the next couple of weeks. I just have to get some things cleaned up and organized and put away. But in the meantime, I would like to introduce you to a new piece of technology that is here in the Nerd Cave right now. And you guys know the Nerd Cave is no stranger to technology. I've had 3D printers in here, both SLA and FDM, racing simulators, virtual reality, large format screen gaming, Xeon supercomputers, everything has been in this room, except for this. This right here is Dexter. This is a five axis robotic arm that you can pretty much make your bitch. This thing will literally do anything. And I mean anything. I'm sure you've all seen the Big Bang Theory. So this arm comes from me from a company called Haddington Dynamics that I had met two years ago at World Maker Fair when I was shooting my video of that event. I actually went to their booth completely by chance. I didn't plan on it. And they completely won me over with the technology here. Now the arm that you're looking at here is all open source, all the way from the manufacturing down to the code that's running under Linux on the FPGA supercomputer. Yeah, none of that boring Arduino crap. Really the only thing on the entire robot that appears to be proprietary is the motor controller board which they create and they still disseminate all the information on how it was created. Now you guys know that I don't normally back Kickstarters because they have a tendency of letting a lot of people down. But I'm making an exception here for Dexter, and the reason for that being is because the company is releasing everything under open source, and their goal isn't to sell a bunch of robotic arms, but to rather build a community to improve the arm, I'm actually a lot more inclined to be on board. Plus, I met with the guys that own and operate the company. They're amazing. When I asked them for an arm, they, they actually flew it up to me. I thought they were just going to put it in a box and ship it to me. No, they, they flew up here, came to my house helped me set it up and walked me through the whole thing for a day. And I will tell you right now, these guys were soldering stuff on my carpet. And the passion that they have for this technology is just, it, it's crazy. You don't see that a lot. Now, the cool thing about this arm is it's mostly off-the-shelf parts coupled with 3D printed stuff. You have the arms, which are carbon fiber. I would say that's the most exotic part of the robot. But the rest of it consists of NEMA stepper motors, harmonic drives, and just off-the-shelf components, including most of the electronics. The arm also has the ability to detect force, so if you push on it, it can push back on you. You can adjust every single one of these variables inside of the software and pretty much make it do anything you want and respond to the environment and the payload that it's carrying any way you want. It comes with a software package called DDE. Now that stands for Dexter Development Environment. It's kind of like Visual Studio for the arm. It allows you to write everything in JavaScript to control the arm. And you can do stuff like use the Google Home API if you want to do voice activation for it. Uh, you can do stuff like basically build the code that gets sent to the robot to control it in however many steps you want. And the UI even allows you to build user interfaces for, for interacting with your program and the robot without having to have a ton of knowledge of how to build a UI yourself. Now, most of the robotic arms that I've looked at that are on the market currently just use stepper motors for positioning. So basically, the stepper moves to a certain point and that validates the position of the robot. But that doesn't give you any ability to fight back against force. It doesn't give the robot any ability to have advanced precision, like if the parts have flex in them. One of the cool things that I really like about this robot is it uses something called optical encoders to augment the stepper motors. Well, the way it works is there's a little disc up here that has a ton of holes in it. And it's currently 3D printed, but they're working on a metallic version. And the optical encoder wheels spin around and basically have a little electronic eye that monitors the position of the robot and in all of its axes. So if you move it around like this, it knows how far it moved and it can move it right back to that position. And that allows the robot to do things like force recognition, it allows the robot to have a much higher precision. Like for instance, I had the robot do a little typing here on my laptop. Hey Dexter, are you a robot? Good boy. Now, as you can tell, the arm is actually pretty tall and its reach is actually very significant as far as the radius that it can reach out to. And it has a universal tool head that they designed that you can do a quick change on. So they have things like a pen tip, uh, you can have a Dremel holder, you can, for, for doing like CNC type stuff, you can also put a 3D printing hot end on it and have it print on any surface. So whether it be vertical, horizontal, it doesn't really matter. Because of the five axes, it can literally come in at an angle of approach any any direction around a sphere. It's, it's actually quite impressive. 
Now, like I said, the robot is running a full Linux kernel on the FPGA supercomputer, which means you can log into it. If you wanted, you can install an Apache web server. You can run clients. You can run services. You can even write your own custom software to interact with the robot. You can also interact to the robot through its service that is running, which basically you tell that to port and you send plain text commands, not horribly unlike G-code. It is, it is a proprietary language at this point, but you send the commands raw to the robot and the robot will respond to them. I think that's really cool because it allows you to implement the robot into lots of existing programming without having to have a huge SDK or anything like that. You can literally send the data byte for byte to the port and you get the intended result. So not only is it open source, you can control it through the DDE software package, you can control it through your own software package, just connecting to the port and sending commands, or you can actually connect to the full-blown Linux and write your own Linux code that runs and interacts with the robot. Now you're probably wondering, how on earth did I end up with this robot arm in here? Sure, I loved Haddington Dynamics, I loved the demo that they gave me, but why would they send me one of these? Well, I'm going to tell you. I sent them a rather lengthy email one day saying, I would love it if you guys would send me a robotic arm, and here are the things that I would do with it. And I held nothing back. I told them I wanted to get this thing to scratch my back, tickle my back, rub my feet, give me Cheetos. Yes. Retrieve and put Cheetos in my mouth. I told them I wanted to be my digital cameraman. When I do live streams, I want to mount a Logitech C920 on a custom 3D printed tool mount and have it be able to rotate the camera around me via macros. Now, the cool thing about this robot is you don't have to know anything about programming, guys. You don't. It actually has a learning capacity. So you can basically grab the robot and just move it around and record some points and then play them back and then give it a macro name. And the software is constantly evolving. Just to give you an idea, they gave me the arm. When I had it for the first week, I found a ton of problems with the software. I sent them to the developer. And unlike when I worked at Microsoft, the developer came back and said, you know what, this is great information. Let me get you a new version. They sent me a new SD card in the mail overnight. A week later, I popped it in and all my issues were solved. If you guys know anything about software development, that is a passionate developer. All right, let me show you guys how easy it is to record a macro. All right, so this is the DDE software. I'm just going to open it up and tell it that I want to go into a follow mode. So inside of the follow mode, you just move the arm around. You just grab it and pull it to wherever you want to be. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the arm over and just have it touch me right here. So while it's touching me, I'm going to tell it to set a point. Then I'm going to tell it to go back here. I'm going to tell it to set another point. Now I'm going to just have it do like a yes gesture by recording a bunch of points with it rocking up and down. Now I'm going to go ahead and record that and tell the robot I want it to return to its normal natural position. Now I'm simply going to just tell it to play back that macro I just recorded. And there's our yes gesture. And it's that simple. If you want the robot to return back to a normal stance, you just go ahead and say you're done. And it'll go back right where it was. Now using the optical encoders in tandem with the stepper motors will always guarantee that the robot returns to its original position. And it's always aware of where it is in space after you calibrate it. Now the DDE software package actually has a simulator built into it also that you can see down here that you can run demos with. So you don't even need the robotic arm to start development for it. And everything in DDE is just simple JavaScript, and they have tons and tons of code examples on how to do things. They recently just sent me a code snippet that allows to talk like Google Home, and I just haven't, I haven't played around with it yet. Now, another really cool thing about Dexter is it's powered by only 20 watts of power, which means you can power the thing off a solar panel and run it off the sun if you wanted to use it like to maintain some kind of a garden, for instance. You can run it off of a battery very easily. It can also handle a huge input voltage range, which is really handy. I mean, right now I'm powering the arm off of a Dell laptop power supply. Now these guys have spent the last five years and a huge fortune developing this arm and this is actually the 12th iteration of the design that they just recently built for me and they are constantly evolving it. And they need people's help. That's why they started the Kickstarter. So I urge you to go check out the Kickstarter. I have the link down in the video description. And I really hope that you guys help them hit their funding goals because I wanna see Dexter evolve further and do some crazy things. And if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you're going to see a lot of Dexter rounds. Like I said, I plan to use it as a cameraman. I plan to actually do a ton of videos with it, even doing typing and typingtest.com. I've got all kinds of plans for this robot, including a lot of 3D printed attachments for it. You know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to be incorporating it into tons of stuff. So you guys are going to see the evolution of this robot on my channel right here.
But if you think about it logically, a robotic arm makes sense. Because if you already have 3D printing, now you have a means for pulling stuff off the 3D printer and starting a new print, for instance. If you're building circuit boards or doing stuff uh, where you're etching and cutting things, you can use this for pick and place to put circuits on the board and position stuff. Another really cool feature about this is because it's force sensitive and it can react to you, you can actually transmit that live in real time over the network. And if you guys go to the Kickstarter page, what you're gonna see is a lot of videos of them doing cool stuff like a ball bounce test, where they actually take it down and bounce it off a ball and transmit that over the internet so that a person can feel that sensation. They also do stuff where they're in a completely different room, like controlling the arms in another room to pick up things and everything, like if you were doing surgery, for instance, in a different location. Another really cool thing they did is augmented motion down at like a molecular scale. They can take the arm and make movements like this translate down to like microns. So you can actually maneuver and solder on a small little uh, electronic board using very large movements in the real world. Lots of really cool stuff. So guys, I believe in these guys so much that I've actually joined their cause and I'm actually helping them with some of the software development that they have and some of the testing and evolution of this arm. And I would just love it if you guys would go over there and give them your support. Make sure you give them a follow on Twitter. If you can't help out with the Kickstarter, then at least give them some positive words of encouragement because these guys are doing some amazing stuff and they are for the community, guys. This Kickstarter is to find people that want to invest and work with them to develop this technology further. It's not just to sell a bunch of things, and that's why I'm going to back this Kickstarter this one and only time. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this first look at Dexter Arm. I absolutely love this thing, and it just sets the imagination free about all of the cool stuff that you can do, and I hope that you guys see the potential that I do in this, and I hope that you guys look forward to seeing this in my live streams and a lot of the stuff that I'm doing in the future. And who knows? I might even bring back Codegasm because... I want to write a little code for it. All right, guys, you have a great day. And until next time. So you guys probably all saw the robot that defeated the CAPTCHA. Let's see if Dexter's up to the job. All right, you got this, Dex. You got this. Come on, buddy. Come on now. Bring it around. Don't let this website show you who's boss. You know what you're doing. We're going to defeat that CAPTCHA. Come on, Dexter, you ain't just any robot. Yeah, son. Aw, oh, damn. Captcha got smarter.